I get asked often, hey Mary, I have this story from my life I wanna tell, but I don't know if I should fictionalize it or write it as a memoir. What do you think? When I get asked this, I say there are three things I would consider. Here they are, let's go. The first thing you should think about is, do you want to be limited by reality? Sometimes I say that even without having written a word, you basically already have a first draft with a memoir simply because you've lived it. It's your life. The raw content is there. In this way, writing nonfiction can kind of be viewed more as curating, like making choices about what goes into the story rather than coming up with material from scratch. Now, the, the flip side of this is that you're, of course, restricted to what actually happened, right? I mean, you can anonymize some details when you have a reason to. Plenty of memoirs open with a disclaimer that characters are, are composite or names are changed, you know, timelines may even be altered. But that's what it takes to change truth for a memoir, an explicit disclaimer that they'll print at the front of the book. Otherwise, the reader, and before that, the publisher, are going to assume that what you are saying is true. So, do you want to be restricted by the truth? This is a question you have to ask yourself. And I think it's worth noting here that constraints are not always bad. You know, constraints, including the constraint of the truth, can be a doorway to greater creativity sometimes. But you are constrained by the truth if you go the memoir route. And that's an important thing to understand. The second consideration is what kind of experience are you hoping for, both before and after publication? I think the fundamental question here is, do you wanna tell this as a true story? Because there's a power in telling a true story and owning it as, as true. It can be healing, it can be a way of recovering power that you've lost, it can be transformative. But it's also intense and it can burn bridges and it can leave you vulnerable to conversations with people about topics that are sensitive to you. Whether these people are fellow writers giving you feedback on your work before you've gotten a book deal, whether these people are family members who have opinions about your work or the fact that you're even doing it, or whether these are strangers once your book comes out. I have a friend who published a memoir about a health crisis she faced. And on her book tour, she was shocked that total strangers during the Q&A portions of her events would ask her questions like, how long are you projected to live now? Here she was promoting a book she wrote and people she didn't even know felt entitled to ask a very medically private question <laughs> that was also very sensitive. You know, when are you going to die, basically? But truthfully, this is what we open ourselves up to with memoir. Now, I'm not saying you have to answer overly personal questions. And in fact, I think it's a very good exercise in drawing boundaries and saying no. But based not only on this friend, but also others, I do think you need to be prepared to field inappropriate questions because there are a lot of people who don't have filters and they'll come for you. Of course, you know, I also always like to say that you can write a memoir first and decide later if and when you're ready to publish it. You know, it's, it's very possible to have a cathartic experience writing a book without having to publish it or without having to publish it for all the world to read. You know, I mean, you, you have the option of sharing it with select people or waiting until certain people kick the bucket before you go out with it. Now, real fast before I share the third thing. If you are working on a book, I want to invite you to apply to The Book Incubator, my 12-month MFA alternative. I started it and now run it with novelist Rufy Thorpe, and you can apply at the link below. It's only two questions, it takes less than five minutes. And if you're writing a novel, you'll wanna check it out. Okay, back to the video. The third consideration, and really the most important one, I think, is what is the big question you are trying to answer in this story? To be honest, all fiction has autobiographical elements, okay? Everyone's does. Everyone's novel is going to have autobiographical elements. We draw on what we have lived, and we draw on what we know. 
But when I wrote my first novel, I knew it had to be fiction because I wanted to explore questions that the facts of my life did not allow me to explore. The question at the heart of that novel was, how do you make peace with an unlived life when you run out of time? So in that novel, it's called When You Read This, the main character gets a terminal diagnosis when she's only 33. And she has to face the fact that her entire adulthood, she's been viewing as like a warm up for her real life, which she thought hadn't started yet. Turns out that was her life. Now, when I had the idea for this book, I was 30, not too far in age from my main character, but I had never had a terminal diagnosis. So I couldn't use the facts of my life to explore this big question of how to make peace with the past. I had to do it through fiction. Now in my next novel, Privilege, my big question was, when the world doesn't give you the justice that you seek, how do you either learn to live with that or find your own justice? Again, I hadn't lived an event that had forced me to face this question. So I didn't even have the option of exploring this through nonfiction. I had to explore it through fiction. This is why I ask, what is the big question that you really want to explore? And which path, fiction or memoir, is going to best allow you to explore it? inventing a story or telling one that life has already put in front of you. Another way of thinking about it is, did life introduce this question for you such that you can just use the facts of your own history to tee it up for the reader? Or are you better off finding its expression through a fictional world that you create? It's a hard thing and there's no right answer. The question is just what do you want to do? Now, speaking of writing a book, are you? Or do you want to? I assume if you're still here, the answer is yes. And if so, I wanna hear from you. When I'm not writing, I help writers write their dream books. If you're curious to know more, I have a free video walking you through my four notebooks method for writing a novel. You can get it and get my free template for using the four notebooks method by just going to the link below and applying for my 12 month MFA alternative, The Book Incubator. The application is super short and sweet. It'll take you under five minutes. I hope to hear from you.